Hello everyone, this is Dan Calloway and uh, today I want to talk about a new operating system that I'm working with. It's called TrueOS and it is a, if you're not familiar with it, it's a, a variant of Unix uh, called FreeBSD. BSD being Berkeley Software Distribution. Uh, and it's a great operating system. I think I, you know, it could be my, my daily PC driver actually. Um, I like it. I've got it right now installed in uh, Oracle VirtualBox and uh, it um, is running there with, uh, I believe I've got 3 gigs of RAM allocated to it, one core, uh, 3.02 gigahertz core uh, CPU, uh, about 32 gigs of space and I just grabbed the TrueOS ISO. It's a pretty large file. It's about 2.7 uh, gigabytes and if you watch the first part of this video series um, of the software full software installation and product review um, you'll notice that uh, it did take a while to install it now uh, what I did was uh, subsequent to that video I did a, a reinstall of it because I was concerned about why it took so long um, to actually do the installation what I didn't think about initially was I didn't take in the VBox editions, uh, which is um, what supports operating system images in Oracle VirtualBox. And when I did that, I was able to uh, grab a much higher resolution on this on the screen, uh, and it seemed like the operating system installed much quicker and ran much better. So I think that was the issue that I was having initially. All right, so we're going to look at TrueOS, a Unix variant of FreeBSD. Let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so we're uh, into Oracle VirtualBox now, and uh, we're firing up the TrueOS um, operating system. Uh, it comes up to the boot screen here, which is typical. And if you don't do anything, in about five seconds, it goes ahead and launches for you. Uh, so it has already launched for me now. Um, and so it's uh, going to go through its uh, boot cycle here, which does take a little bit of time. It's, it's not too bad. Um, but it is booting at the moment, and it kind of reminds me of Linux. It's reminiscent of Linux um, because TrueOS is built... Well, first of all, it's Unix, so it's built on security first, but it also is compatible with Linux so that you can uh, look at it. But it is not a Linux kernel. It does not have a Linux kernel, so it has its own uh, Unix kernel, and so you cannot call it a Linux distro. It's uh, FreeBSD 12.0 current is what it's based on. AMD 64, I'm running the 64-bit version right now. All right, so now it's still running through its uh, boot up here, and uh, it'll be uh, be out of it here in a few moments. Um, like I said, I really like uh, TrueOS. I think it's a great operating system. Um, it could be my daily driver, to be honest, on my main PC. Uh, might have some hardware issues, not sure. Uh, now, by the way, uh, as you can see on the screen as it's going by, um, TrueOS uh, uses the ZFS, or if they, as they call it in the UK, ZFS system, file system, and that's a great uh, file system for uh, a distro of Linux or for Unix as well, uh, because you can take snapshots along the way, and that's something I'm going to be looking at. Uh, and this particular operating system has something called a profile uh, crypt. Uh, Person, it's called pers Persona Crypt, I think it's called. I haven't looked at that yet, but it allows you to uh, encrypt your home directory and, and uh, move it from machine to machine. Okay, so it's coming out of the boot cycle now, and uh, the operating system's coming up in uh, VM. Now, keep in mind that in this whole video, this is running in a virtual machine, so it's going to be degraded a little bit in its, uh, the way it reacts, uh, its responsiveness, etc., etc., Okay, so we're on the Lumina desktop at the login screen. I'm going to go ahead and type in my password. Looks like I mistyped it here, so let me go ahead and click OK. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, retype that password. I have a separate password for the standard user and for root, of course, as you always want to do. Okay, so now it's coming up the full screen. 
and um, it'll develop here in a few seconds. You get this starting Lumina desktop, you get a quote from a famous person, which I think is pretty neat. This one's from Confucius, study the past if you would define the future. Um, what it's doing is it's finalizing its startup and eventually it'll come out to the desktop itself. Um, and we're using the uh, Lumina desktop here. Uh, you can install Mate and uh, XFCE, other desktop environments, if you want to. Uh, but I just let it went ahead and let it take the default of Lumina. Uh, and here it is, my uh, desktop. Okay, and we're in TrueOS. So it's looking good. I've got a few things already installed. I've got the full LibreOffice suite, uh, GFTP file transfer protocol application, uh, some other things, Thunderbird as well. Uh, let me right click here on the desktop and let's select terminal and get into the terminal. Um, and the terminal is very similar to the terminal in, in Linux, except you get a percent sign when you're in the standard user instead of a dollar sign. I'm going to bump up the uh, resolution here a little bit so you can see it. I'm going to log in as root. And so I'm now root and it's got the pound sign here at the prompt indicating that I am root and have root privileges. I want to SSH into my uh, Ubuntu 18.04 desktop, which is the host machine for this VM, by the way. And its IP address is 192.168.1.50. It asks me, do I want to log in? I'll say yes. And I'm giving the password for Data Pioneer on that machine. And I'm actually, I'm logged in now. You can see Data Pioneer dash Ubuntu. So I'm going to clear the screen. Uh, I'm going to do a listing here, long listing in human readable format. You can see I am logged into my Ubuntu box. Uh, the current working directory is home data pioneer, and I am data pioneer. I'm going to clear the screen again. And let me CD into the pictures directory. And I'm going to do a long listing. And there's, I'm going to grab one of these pictures here. Uh, and I think I'm probably going to grab the Ubuntu Ocean.png. All right, I'm going to copy that to the clipboard and then come back out to the terminal here. And I'm going to run an, uh, a secure copy command to copy that to my uh, Ubuntu desktop. Uh, I mean, back to my uh, TrueOS desktop, rather. So it's called Ubuntu Ocean.ping and then Data Pioneer at 192. 168.1.16, which is the IP address of this TrueOS uh, machine. The user directory, uh, home directory, rather, is at user home data pioneer, uh, which is a little bit different than Linux. And then we'll do a colon and tell it where I want that particular, or pictures rather, I've got to pull that into. And I'm going to do then, uh, uh, I had a colon already. Uh, anyway, I'm going to put in the password and the secure copy 100%, so it copied that file over to my pictures directory on this machine, which is TrueOS. Go ahead and close out the uh, SSH connection. And let's do a long listing here, change directory first, rather, to pictures. Uh, oh, yeah, I forgot. I got to, uh, yeah, I've got to change directory. Uh, it's not a, a relative path. It's an absolute path here. So let me go ahead and uh, CD into the correct um, location. First of all, I think what I'll do is I'll change, uh, switch user to myself, okay, and then I'll uh, CD into the uh, pictures directory. All right, I'm in there now, so I'll do a long listing, human readable. And there's Ubuntu Ocean.ping, so that's secure copy up to this box here, uh, which is the Unix box from the Linux box. So the secure copy command worked just fine, SSH worked just fine. I did have to install SSH into uh, Linux though. Okay, so you can see here that my IP address, when I do an IF config uh, in the Unix machine, it is 192.168.1.16. So that's how I, why I was able to do what I did. Let me go ahead and exit the terminal here, get out of the terminal altogether, get back to the desktop. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you some couple of things here on the desktop. You can see some of the icons are here. 
of things that are already installed. And on the desktop in the uh, Unix, you can right click and do launch, which is usually the easiest way to get into an application from the desktop. You can double click on it. I just choose to right click and launch it. It's just a little more uh, secure that way. Um, and you know, and you make sure you get it. All right, so we do have LibreOffice 5, not 6, which 6 is the latest version, as you know. So it's a little behind the times here. This is maintained by, um, I believe, a couple of people, not too many. All right, so we're typing into, um, into a document here in LibreOffice Writer. I'm going to go ahead and give it a title, How Now Brown Cow .odt. I leave the extension off, it'll automatically attach the .odt. Put it in the Documents folder or directory under my home directory here and click Save. And uh, so that's saved or should save the file out. Let me go ahead and close. Um, and there's the name. Let me go ahead and close the um, uh, LibreOffice 5 writer. Okay, so let's right click and click Browse Files and um, we should be able to pull up the, uh, the file manager in uh, Unix. Okay, and uh, the, click on Documents and there it is. How now, brown cow .odt, 7.88 kilobyte file. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and close that now. And let's take a look at GFTP. So let's go ahead and launch GFTP, which is, uh, like I told you, the, the file transfer protocol uh, application. Uh, I have it in Linux, but now it's in Unix as well. Installed it. We go ahead and click on the uh, button here, and it's prompting me for a password. This is my personal cloud at 192.168.1.157. Um, it, we have connected to that personal cloud and I'm going to go ahead out to the public side of the personal cloud there uh, in the public folder. I'm going to grab a file there and download it to this desktop. Alright, so I'm going to go into the shared pictures and let me grab the beach.ping and let me go over and let me put that in the pictures folder. Um, not, not the documents folder, grab the wrong one. Let me go up the uh, tree here, come back down to the pictures directory. This, now this is on the True OS box, not on the Linux box. Click the, the left arrow and that's going to copy that file down to the box at the pictures directory. And uh, there it is. Go ahead, copied OK. Transferred, fine. Go ahead and close this application. And now if we go back out on uh, browse files, you should see uh, in the pictures directory here on the TrueOS Unix box um, that file residing in that folder. So let's go ahead and click on pictures and let it come up. And there it is, the beach.ping. So transferred the, that utility transferred the file just fine to my uh, TrueOS machine. All right, here we are. This is Double click on it and it opened. And uh, this is Phototonic, I believe. Um, never used that application before, so if I'd open with Phototonic, um, I believe that's what I opened with it with earlier. Um, so it should open up. Yeah, that's, this is it right here. And if I make it full screen, okay, it looks pretty good. So Phototonic is a pretty good application here in true OS. So this is a great, I mean this is really good uh, Unix operating system and this is the GUI you know for the uh, for the Unix operating system. So let's right click and uh, fire up Firefox web browser and it was already installed. It came natively with uh, with true OS so I was happy to see that. Uh, Thunderbird Mail also came natively with uh, true OS as well. Uh, but the guys that uh, the guys that developed this uh, Unix variant here, they did a great job um, with TrueOS. I mean, it's uh, for the most part very responsive, and like I said, it is a little sluggish because we are in a VM, so we have to keep that in mind. Uh, but on a regular machine, this thing would fly. 
Okay, so here we are in Firefox, and let's see what version that we're running here. Let's see how late this particular version is. Uh, so it's come up now, so it's stable enough for me to go ahead and go over and get into the help about uh, this browser. And so let's go down to help and about Firefox. And let's see what kind of, see what version we got going on here. And it looks like it's Firefox Quantum 58.0.264 bit. That's uh, pretty much the latest version right there. The only other thing you could do is get ESR, uh, but Firefox Quantum that's a great uh, great version. It's very current, so that I'm, I'm happy to see that as well. This is bleeding edge stuff here too, by the way. Um, True OS. Uh, gets its bleeding edge uh, updates if that's what you want you can turn that off alright so we're back to the desktop again and let me go ahead and right click and get you into the app cafe uh, well let's let's go over first before we do that let's look at the wallpaper the wallpaper that I have here on the desktop is one I pulled in from a, a picture that I had uh, and you can you can pull in pictures by clicking the plus sign here in the app and going in navigating over to your pictures directory and uh, selecting a picture and pulling it in and then clicking save um, you can do automatic full screen fit screen title a lot of different uh, presentations for your desktop um, but here I'm going to go into files and then I'm going to go to data pioneer and go down to the pictures directory and see I can grab one of these and then uh, click open and save it. I'm not going to do that. All right, but uh, yeah. So the only thing I don't like about this wallpaper settings app is or utility is you don't seem to be able to go out on the web and get anything. Uh, maybe I'm just missing something. All right, so let's get back into App Cafe. Now this is similar to if you're familiar with like Ubuntu. This is familiar to the uh, to the Ubuntu Software Center. This is how you install all your applications uh, in uh, TrueOS uh, Unix if you don't want to do it any other way. You can go into the terminal and do it, but if you don't want to do that or you're, you, know, you don't feel comfortable doing it, you can go ahead and get into the App Cafe and there's a bunch of, uh, of applications. Now it pops up TrueOS to let you know what operating system you're in, like you didn't know, but there it is. Now you can click on these buttons and you can pull up what's available already in the repository. So let's uh, let's go ahead and click on one of these here. Uh, let's get into the multimedia section and you can see what we've got available here. We've got a whole host of things that are available under the multimedia section here uh, in um, the App Cafe. So it's pretty slick. Uh, we'll find something here in a minute to uh, to install and I'll show you how that works. I don't think there's anything right here that I want to install per se. Well maybe maybe the clip grab. Let's go ahead. That's a program to download videos from YouTube. So let's highlight it, click it. And when you click it, uh, it opens up inside um, the app cafe and shows you that uh, you can install it uh, with the install button on the right hand side but it also gives you a description which is really nice and what it's applicable to YouTube, Dailymotion, Vimeo, so it's more than just YouTube. Let's click that install button on the right hand side and it says are you sure you want to install these packages? It tells you how much uh, required disk space you have etc. I want to click OK. Now you'll notice the tab says pending one job and so let's click on that and open it up and we can watch what's happening behind the scenes uh, and you can see that uh, you know exactly why or what rather it's doing as it installs this application so we've got four or fifteen right now um, things that it's grabbing from the web it's actually going out on the web and, and fetching these things and my connection by the way in TrueOS is through a bridged uh, connection through my adapter that I have on the host machine which is running uh, Linux 1804 and that's a great way of doing it by the way when you're in VirtualBox or VMware either just bridge your connection and then you get the same the same IP address DHCP will issue an IP address in the same network uh, 
that your host machine is on so it'll talk to it. All right, so no pending now. So that means it's installed. If you click the install button, and let this come up. You can see that it's in that list uh, when it comes up. Uh, but it has to, to load it and refresh. So let's go on over. The clip grab is at the top there. And so let's go on over now and we can go ahead and close this out. And when we do, clip grab should be on the desktop already. And there it is. Clip grab's on the desktop. And so I'm going to right click on it and launch it. See what it looks like. Never used this particular application before. There it is. Uh, looks like pretty slick. You can do download, settings, about, search. Um, so I'll have to play with this later. But, uh, you know, it lets you download uh, videos directly from YouTube, which is something I do from time to time. Let's go ahead and close that. And let's see what we can do next here. Um, there's the True OS Handbook. Um, we are running the Lumina desktop, so there's the Lumina theme. So let's right click on it and uh, uh, launch that. This is the theme engine for Lumina. Let you tweak um, the Lumina theme uh, itself and do various things like changing the color scheme, changing the style, changing the palette. Uh, you can. There's a preview window there that shows you what's going on. We're doing an active palette so that means any changes we make will automatically be reflected in the preview. Uh, it, you can change the effects, the fonts, the icons, the cursors, the general styles and desktop styles. Those are the ones that are enabled and doesn't appear there are any available on the right. But if you had some, you can right click or right arrow over. So let's launch the desktop configurator and the configuration and uh, bring that up. And within this, let me go ahead and bring that up to full screen. Here you can change the appearance of your desktop, you can change the theme, Windows effects. Uh, oops, kind of jumped out on me there. Let me go back into it again. Let me close that. And, yep, jumped out again. Um, this happens from time to time here with this particular application I've noticed. So let me get back into it again. Uh, this time I'll try not to get it to close. It might close on me again, but if it does, I'll just reopen it. Not a big deal. Um, all right, so let's see. You can change applications here. Uh, keyboard shortcuts. Here you've got all your applications of your major ones. Your web browser, email client. There we go. Um, there's the App Cafe. There's Screen Saver. Uh, Auto Start. Those are programs that automatically start up when you boot the machine. If you've got a check mark next to it, that means it will automatically start up. Like the sysadmin client will automatically start up at boot time. All right, and so let's get out of this. Oh, and you might need to change the mouse configuration. I, I noticed that the mouse was a little fast uh, here when I was getting into it at first. There's your user settings, your localization, general options, uh, setting up different users. Um, and on on the setup part of this particular uh, operating system, it did ask me to set up a standard user and ad in addition to the root user and put and give each a password. Okay, so we clicked on the uh, server information for the uh, services that are running right now. Uh, and there's a database connected to this, and it's got to sync um, so that uh, you know until it actually syncs that database and it's but this is the first time so it may take a little bit longer than normal uh, it will eventually present on the screen all the services that are currently uh, listed and whether they're actually running or not running whether they're set up to automatically start it boot up or not and you can make changes to that if you want so it just got to be patient here with uh, the operating system uh, looks like closed on me perhaps Oh, there it goes. I, I just hit the wrong button there. So it's still syncing, so just have to be patient. There we go. All right, so here are the applications, I mean services rather, that are running. Uh, if it's true, if it says false under running, it's not running. Start on boot is either true or false. And then there's a description of what the service is. I want to highlight the Bluetooth. It's not currently running. 
and it is not currently set to start on boot now it may not in fact start up for me because I don't have Bluetooth on this host laptop so I'm going to go ahead and see if it will start up that could be why it's not started up right now uh, and if it doesn't I'll just go ahead and close the screen and it does not look like it's going to start up so um, if it can't detect it obviously it can't start it uh, it's a service that's listed obviously in the operating system so that if you do have it it's there but it's not running and it's not set up to start up automatically on startup uh, but it's still syncing so I don't know but I'm going to go ahead and close it get out of it let's go ahead and close the desktop settings as well and let's see what else we can do here um, here's the Thunderbird client I'm going to launch Thunderbird show you that and uh, it takes a few seconds for Thunderbird to come up as well so again remember we're in a VM so it's, you know it's not like we have eight gigs of RAM or more allocated to the to the true OS if we did uh, this thing would be screaming along I've only got three gigs of RAM I could have given it four but I only gave it three I probably should have given it four so let me just right click and launch it again. I think I might have missed it when I did it. it. Should come up this time. So far, I'm really impressed with TrueOS. Um, I have to tell you, it's as good, if not better, than some Linux distros I've worked with. And it's very stable, uh, by the way. Unix is built security uh, from the ground up, it's built with security in mind. And so you're going to be very secure here in this operating system especially the VM but if you're even out on your regular install it's going to be very secure alright so this is the start menu basically for true OS and you here you have a menu and uh, you can see various things there in that menu uh, when it was open uh, there we go and then we're in the sysadmin control panel which is what I clicked on and you can manage your SSL keys you can manage your boot environment, you click on the firewall. So we're in the True OS Unix firewall right now. You can see port 22 on TCP for SSH, which is your secure shell login. Um, if you click that button there, it gives you the entire list of uh, applications that or processes that can be running on your machine. And you can go into the firewall and you can uh, tailor those to your liking. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight SSH and close the port. And so when I do that, it eliminates SSH as an application um, or process because it runs with the SSHD or SSH daemon process. Um, but I can add it back if I want to. Um, and uh, I can do that via this list, which is open by service. So if you select on a uh, select a service, we should be able to scroll down the list and um, and get to SSH again. So let's go ahead and click the down arrow. And I think rather than using the scroll bar, which seems to be a little flaky for some reason, uh, yeah, I closed it again. I'm going to use the down navigation arrow when I get it open again and scroll down. I believe you can type in the first couple of letters of the uh, process that you want to uh, acquire as well. Yeah, see it keeps closing it, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, use the down arrow. And uh, let's go ahead and get back into it again. And also type in S and then SS, SS for SSH. And see, this, this would take a while to get to it, but if I just hit the keyboard, if I type SS, it will bring that up. So let me go ahead and do that. It'll just pop right to it. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's scroll down again first. See if we can get now. Yeah, it's gonna take too long to do that. There we go. S and then SS. And that should take us right down to SSH. Okay. Uh, so we're getting close. We're getting there. And um, so, well, as soon as we get it, we're going to open the port on it, and that should re restore the uh, 
the entry in the firewall here. Here we go. And so it's back in the firewall now. Actually, UDP and TCP. We only want really TCP. But I'm just going to go ahead and leave that. And uh, so that's how you uh, open a service or select a service uh, through the firewall. Let's go ahead and close the firewall. And uh, so we're, let's look at the workspace one. You've got different workspaces. You've got applications here, development, QT assistant and linguist. You've got education, graphics, uh, multimedia, network. Uh, the full office suite here, although it is Office uh, LibreOffice 5. You got your settings here, uh, which is a full range, looks like. Very good. Utilities, you got lots of utilities here that you can use. You can install more. So, yeah, I'm really liking uh, TrueOS. This is really good. Um, so, let's go ahead and um, let's launch App Cafe one more time here, get back in. And. Let it open back up again. And let me see here. If you click the browse. And let's go over to search. And I want to go ahead and install GIMP. I noticed GIMP wasn't on the list. So that's the uh, that's that's the application for manipulating uh, pictures. So there it is, GIMP. So I'm going to click on it. There's a description of what it is. And so I'm going to go ahead and click the install button, click OK, and let it go ahead and install it. And we'll click that pending tab again. And uh, so we can take a look at um, what's happening behind the scenes. Uh, I kind of like to see what's going on. That's why I like to install a lot of things in the terminal uh, instead of installing them through the GUI. However, for uh, Unix, until I get used to the command line, uh, a little bit more in Unix. Uh, I'm very familiar with the command line interface in Linux, but the Unix command line interface is a bit different. And so it uses a different package manager. It doesn't use uh, apt like uh, Ubuntu does or um, zipper like um, uh, SUSE Linux does. It uses something called PKG, which makes sense. And you see that. Um, reminiscent in Linux, by the way, uh, when it does a depackage uh, after it installs something, it's it's that's the Unix coming forward in the Linux there. Um, so if you do see that when you're installing packages, uh, when it's finishing them up, it always seems to run the depackage you know, uh, utility uh, to finish those up, clean it up. All right, so we've got 27, 28 of 31 right now that it's fetching for GIMP. It's checking the integrity of, of what it downloaded, which is really nice. It checks all the files to make sure that they're, they haven't been uh, in, you know, uh, um, intercepted and malware been injected into them, that kind of thing. It uses the SHA-256 uh, fingerprint to do that. And uh, I really like that. And like I said, Unix is very secure by design. All right, so it's extracting these packages now and then it'll begin installing. So it's extracting each one and then installing each one in turn. And it shouldn't be much longer. We're up to 27 now. 29. We've got two more to go. It's one thing about uh, Linux and Unix. You've got to be patient. Here we go. So it's installed. All right, so now we can go ahead and close this interface. And it should have GIMP on there. It is. GIMP is on the desktop. So let's right click and launch uh, GNU Image Manipulation Program. Now, the one thing about GIMP is when it comes up, it has to do several things. It looks for data files and it queries for new plugins. So it, you know, it takes a few uh, seconds, you know, almost a minute sometimes for the uh, GIMP to come up, and that's that's true of especially of the first time it opens. After that, it uh, stores a lot of information 
in cache that it uses and so it'll open up a lot faster on the second time around. That first time around it does take a little while to open up. That's okay, we got we got time. Alright, so it's still querying for new plugins, doing its thing, and it'll refresh that here in a moment, and then it should open right up for us. So like I said, so far True OS is uh being true, I really like it. I, I like what I see, uh, regardless of what other people say about it. Uh, it is not PC BSD, I can tell you that. PC BSD was horrible. Uh, anybody you talk to about PC BSD will tell you that it was not an operating system you wanted. This one, however, is leaps beyond that, so it's really, really nice. Okay, so it's starting the extensions now and so it should launch. Here we go. First thing I do when I get into GIMP, this is true in Linux, hit Windows, come down to single Windows mode so that everything comes together in one package, one window. So let's bring that window up and then go to full screen. Alright, and so there it is. So there's GIMP. Let's go up to File and Open. Let's open up a picture from the Pictures directory. And let's just pick one at random here. Select it and click open. And you're in the file in GIMP. You can manipulate this file any way you want to. Um, looks just as good as any install in Linux I've ever seen. So this is Unix here and this is uh, really great. Alright, so I think we're done. I think it's about time to get out of here. So I'm going to right click in Terminal. And I'm going to issue a shutdown command after I become root. You have to be root to do it. Um, I'm going to issue a command to shut down this system in one minute. So I need to log in as root. And then issue the shutdown halt command plus one. Alright, and it says shut down at Thursday, May 17, 19, 2018. And if you're in the military, you know military time, that's 7.04.55. And it is 7.04 p.m. right now, so about 55 seconds from when we hit it, um, it will shut down. Now the PID, or process identifier, is 11913 associated with shutdown. So if you needed to kill it, you could go into top or something, and uh, top is available in Unix here in TrueOS. And you could actually kill PID 11913 and, and kill the shutdown process. All right, so we're getting close to that time now. When it does hit the time to shut down, it'll issue a warning to any users that might be attached to terminals hanging off this box that, hey, it's getting ready to shut down. You need to log out. And it gives them a few seconds to do that. I think it's about 15 seconds by default. I'm not going to wait for it. There we go. System shutdown time has arrived. That's their cue to get out of the, uh, the terminal and save their work first otherwise they're going to lose it so probably what I'm going to do is go ahead and just shut this down at this point uh, it should eventually um, go back out back out to the VM to Oracle Virtual Box uh, to the running uh, of that particular uh, Unix uh, operating system in a shutdown mode, there it comes so it's in the process of shutting down, eventually will shut down but I think I'm just going to go ahead and close um, this window and get out of it. And so I'll just click the X in the upper right hand corner, power down the machine or power off the machine, click OK. And that should take us back out to Oracle VirtualBox. And that's it. So thanks for watching.